Hi there, welcome to the New York State Museum. I'm Fiona, and today I would like to share a couple of crafts with you inspired by the Statue of Liberty. Now, the Statue of Liberty was a joint project between France and the United States a little over 130 years ago. And like most group projects in school, every person, or in this case country, has their own job. France was in charge of designing and constructing the statue itself, while the United States, their responsibility was creating the stand or the pedestal that the final statue would be placed on top of. Once this iron copper structure was completed, it was sent to the United States from France in over 300 pieces. It got to its ultimate destination, New York Harbor, which is pictured behind me in one of our murals in the museum space. So here we have the Statue of Liberty. And then less than a mile away, also in New York Harbor, is Ellis Island. Approximately 12 million immigrants were documented entering America through Ellis Island between the years 1892 and 1954. The Statue of Liberty was often the first thing seen by ships entering the harbor after days or even a couple of weeks at sea. So it very quickly became a symbol of freedom and hope to countless immigrants coming to America seeking new or better lives. Now the statue itself, from the bottom of the pedestal to the top of Lady Liberty's torch, measures roughly 305 feet. That's the equivalent of the length of three basketball courts or eight and a half telephone poles balanced on top of each other. So the next time you're out for a walk or you're passing under a telephone pole or electric electricity wire, I want you to look up, see how tall it is, and now imagine eight more stacked on top. You'd have to crane your neck all the way back to even begin to see the very top. So the statue is very, very tall. You can see the little people on the bottom. And now the statue weighs about 225 US tons. Tons aren't really a unit measurement that we use a lot every day. So one ton would be about 2,000 pounds. So the Statue of Liberty weighs 450,000 pounds. That's like 18 school buses or 37 elephants. If you were to calculate it yourself and try to figure out how many of you it would take to equal the weight of the Statue of Liberty, that number would be in the thousands. So I mentioned Lady Liberty's torch. It's one of the most recognizable parts of her. It's held high in her right hand, colored gold. If I were to stand with my right hand held high and have you guess who or what I was pretending to be, a lot of you would probably guess the Statue of Liberty. Now one of the other recognizable parts of her is her crown. High on her head with seven spikes or rays coming out of the top. Unfortunately, we can only count five in this picture, but there are seven, the same number as oceans and continents in, on Earth. So today I wanna to make our own Statue of Liberty crowns and torches using materials that you can find around the house. I'm going to do both crafts in this video. The first one I'm going to do is the torch, and then the second will be our crown. Okay. So to do our torch project, some of the materials that you're going to need are toilet paper rolls, green paper, red, orange, and or yellow. And if you don't have any of these paper colors, you can always use white paper and color it in yourself, or even tissue paper. Something to trace with. I'm gonna use a pen today so it shows up on the camera, but probably use a pencil. People make mistakes. Then you can erase it. Scissors and tape. Alrighty, I'm gonna take my green paper and my toilet paper roll to start. So in order to cover my toilet paper roll, I'm just gonna make a mark on the paper with how long the toilet paper roll is. And if you want to do a line the whole way with a ruler, you can. I'm gonna eye it and cut along that length. And it doesn't matter how long this piece is because it's gonna wrap around and cover. So I've got my first side attached. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape or glue, but I prefer tape to attach it. 
and then finish rolling it up. And then another piece of glue or tape. Sometimes you might see the edge. We can just make that the bottom of our torch. Okay, I'm going to put my torch base aside for just a moment so I can get started on the flames. Now I'm gonna use one of each color. You can use all orange, you can use all yellow, you can use red and yellow, gold if you have it. I like all three. So to get the flame shapes the easiest, I'm going to draw what looks like a mountain range on the paper. It doesn't really have to go all the way because we'll be rolling it around. And cut it out. It doesn't matter if they're perfect triangles because we know flames aren't perfect triangles if you were to watch a candle flame burning or a fire, like a bonfire. You're gonna put more curves in them if you wanna spend more time drawing it. bit where some of my pen is really showing. Okay. So then we want to be able to see all those different colors. So I'm going to place them kind of alternating. Make each color a little bit lower as I go down. So you can kind of see the other colors peekabooing out from the other side. And then I'm going to tape them together. It doesn't matter how you tape them on the bottom, it won't be seen because they'll be going inside the toilet paper roll. So it doesn't have to be perfect or beautiful where you can't see where it's connected. No biggie. So I'm just gonna make sure it's gonna stay all together. Okay. And now since it's three pieces of construction paper, that's not really used to being rolled up. So I'm kind of just gonna roll it up in my hands first. Get it used to being rolled again. See how all the flames poke in front of each other? So I'm rolling it pretty tightly so that it can fit inside my toilet paper roll that I already covered. So when you grab that and if you let go, it'll expand to the right size. Put it lower, put it higher. And it stays in pretty well itself. If you want to, you can sneak another piece of tape inside if you'd like. Mine bent a little bit. But. And then you have your torch. I'm gonna put that to the side. I've just gotta take a couple other supplies out for our crown and we'll get started on that. Okay, so for our crown, the main supply that we're going to need is a paper plate. We'll also need some green paper. You can even use leftover scraps from the last project. You will need a green crayon or a marker, colored pencil, as well as a black one. I like using a black marker and a green crayon. Yarn, a hole punch, tape, scissors, and again, something to trace with. All right. Move some of this to the side. First thing we're gonna do with our paper plate is cut out the center, since we need to be able to put it on our head. If it helps, I'm gonna trace around where I'm gonna cut so I know where my scissor is going. See, that's why we use pencils usually. 
but it's not a part that's going to be seen, so no big deal. Okay, then let me cut it out. Sometimes since it's curved, it's a little tricky to cut, so you can always get help by mom or dad or an older sibling. see it's kind of getting that headband shape that you can put on your head. Now the next step is to color it green. I don't want you guys to have to watch me color it green over the entire video. I think that would take a little too long. So I have one colored green. I'm going to finish coloring it with you guys on the video. It's not perfect because at least my paper plate has a lot of ridges so you aren't going to get all that white space. But that's okay. You'd be here forever if you were trying to get every single space covered. It would take a really long time. Okay. So I have this covered. The next part I want to do is the windows. Those black spots on top of Lady Liberty's crown. So since I have these divots in my paper plate already, that helps me a lot. So I'm going to get where I think the center is and just kind of color that divot in, an oval shape. Skip a couple. I'm going to skip a couple more the further I get from the top. just about even. I might be one or two off. Okay, so we're all set with the base of our crown. So the next bit I want to do are the spikes or the rays, which is going to be on our green paper. Now you can eye it. I made myself a stencil. It's roughly two inches by five inches. And I'm just going to trace that a couple of times. If you end up making a triangle shape that seems really big, then you can only have five spikes if that's gonna, what's going to fit on your paper plate. I think I can get seven to fit, so we're going to go for seven, just like the actual crown. While we're doing this, and it takes me a little while to do it, the Statue of Liberty, another fun fact, wasn't always green. It used to look just like a penny because it was made with copper. But over a few decades, with the weather being rained on, wind, it slowly turned the kind of minty green that we think of it today. Hard to imagine.
last two. Oh, I realized I only traced six. No, seven. We're good. That's why you always count, guys. All right, now after all that cutting, you have your seven spikes. I'm just gonna flip them so none of my pen shows. So to attach them to the back of your paper plate, you can use tapered glue. If your paper plate is ridged, tape might work better. So to do that, I'm going to place it where I think I want it and then tape it on the back. And then I might just place them to make sure I know where I want them. Oh, don't forget to flip them so that the pen is showing on the outside. And we can tape them all down. Have seven spikes for each country and continent. Now most of the times this paper plate is going to be a little too big and it might tickle our ears right behind our ears a bit which I find a little unpleasant. So we can trim the edge a little bit just a little bit at a time so you don't do too much. Um, do a little bit more here and that might be more comfortable. And then my other option for you guys is with a hole punch and some yarn. I'm gonna cut this in half. You can tie in some yarn that'll tie under your head, kind of at the nape of your neck. Gonna tie a quick knot. Another one. There we go. And then it should be able to tie. Under your hair or behind your neck. Quick little knot. And boom, you've got your Lady Liberty torch and crown. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you at the museum sometime soon. Bye.